Oh, good morning. I'm in the kitchen, but now you get to see a completely different angle because usually the camera's over there and behind my back and pointing this way. And now you get to see the shoebox kitchen from another angle. And today there's so much to talk about. Oh my gosh. So let's do a little wrap up of what I've been talking about. I've made some iMovie compilations and it is that this journey that I have been taking everyone on because I'm on it is one in which you're returning to your authentic self. Like I am at base camp and I'm going to be going to my Sherpa village and hanging out at my tea house and learning how to make really good tea. And we'll be doing that as well. We'll be making hibiscus tea. But right now, what we're gonna be learning is um, how to mend ripped and torn jeans and lacerations on your body so that you can learn how to give yourself wilderness first aid, otherwise known as DIY. So what happens if you have a really good friend who is something of a um, hillbilly, but not, he's a good old country boy. This guy knows how to make a stew. He knows how to uh, cook, a raise a chicken and cook a chicken and all of that good stuff. Anyway, he's fixing up his house and I'm going up and I'm adding the girly touches, such as where to hang the pictures and the mirrors and things. So he happens to have a domestic wolf, otherwise known as a German shepherd. And so on, um, oh gosh, on July 29th, 2024, I was up there and it was our last night and wouldn't you know it, um, that dog took a taste of my leg only because it is aggressive because it's afraid of me. But what it taught me was that dog does listen to my friend who said no. And so rather than ripping and tearing my leg, he just gave me a laceration along the shin in the front of my leg. And then he slid his canines to the back, took one last puncture mark where my calf muscle is, but then got my jeans and rip and tore those. See, so these are Levi's. These are Levi 505s. I wear guy jeans. I wear guy jeans because of the pockets. And also, I gotta tell you, the more cotton that you have in your jeans, the cooler you remain when you're out and about. So pardon me while I arrange my hair, because I have bedhead. Because, you know, when you're on Mount Everest, do you really think you're gonna put makeup on? No. So I am in a feral state of being, which means every person for themselves. When you're on Mount Everest and you're in the death zone, unless you've paid a Sherpa to encourage you to keep going down, like in the case of Lincoln Hall, um, then you don't know that when you get into a certain place of your mind, it shuts down and you go into a completely different zone of, of survival and all you're thinking about is self-preservation. That's what it's like in the death zone. Metaphorically, that's like what it's like living with a narcissist, but without reliving that victory of going, oh, that's what happened but then the also, ah, oh, recovery, but the victory, ah, you see it, now you understand. The messed up family, the conditioning, the, the bad programming, garbage in, garbage out, and now you can look at the gifts of your life by reparenting, 
And the reparenting is going through, and that's what we talk about in Spiritual Kutsungi. But for today's video, we're going to talk about uh, wilderness first aid for lacerations and how to do creative mending. So I'm doing creative mending of both my Levi's and my soul. How about that? And pull up a cup, a cup, a pull up a chair. I have, I'm two fisted today. I've got water and my mushroom coffee in a Christmas mug. Why? So that I get to know this person, this, this, meaning of this entity, the Santa Claus, the Satan, but also <sighs> enjoy yourselves a little bit more. He's, it's a joke. Uh, we all know that Christmas was stamped onto uh, what we know as the winter solstice. And that is, there's always a star in the east and it's Venus, the planet. And it looks like a star, but it's not, and it's constant, and it's bright because it's Venus. It's Venus um, Luciferius. In the spring, it is uh, Venus Hesperus, which is really interesting because that would mean that in the spring, what we have with the energy of Venus is the Hesperian energy, and what we have with Venus in the winter time is a luciferous energy but what's the difference now without going into lucifer one can look at it as light bearer so light bearer is also um a metaphor if you will for symbolic words for a person who sheds insight so when you are having your own aha moments and your own epiphanies as you go back into your, uh, if you, as you descend out from the death zone, which is the narcissistic abuse and the environment that they created, which is a false reality that only supports one life system and that's theirs. As you descend down and you get to camp four and you start counting down three, two, one, and you get to base camp, your base camp is actually somebody else's pinnacle. And you got to recognize how rugged and how um, uh, incredibly resilient your soul and spirit are to have survived the death zone in that harsh environment, but then to get through all of the pitfalls of the descent, which is mental mind effery and then freezing and having uh, grief and all of those feelings that you're having are all normal and natural and it's okay to have them and it's also and really really important to create this total 100 percent self-acceptance because i in my healing process of two years I, uh, from August, 2022 to August, 2024, which is now, in fact, August, 22, 22, it was actually 8222022, which is pretty magnificent when I discovered all of this stuff, which was the final realization that my mother was the pathological narcissist and I was a conditioned child and I was blind to it. And all of my partners then were subsequently narcissists at varying levels. You know what I mean? And so there was a garden variety and then there was the uh, overt grandiose and then there was the vulnerable covert, which was the most dangerous of them all. And I have stories and adventures and things that I've learned, but it's not important to go into any of that. Uh, and in fact, now I can bless my children's uh, father and his chosen wife that he is now of 20 years and be really grateful because that means my grandchildren have those people <clears throat> in their lives, which means, and they're well financially. So that means my grandchildren will have financial stability. Even though I don't as a gypsy, they do. So 
Cheers to that. <clears throat> I'm very excited. Mm. Okay, so this is a true story. Uh, people may be like, well, why didn't you do this? Why didn't you do that? The dog was letting go, and then his uh, teeth, his canines, captured the, um, this is the front of the jeans. So that's the front of the jeans. Can you see it? Oh, hold on, I'm going to get my glasses. So he got the front of the jeans. <clears throat> what happened was, we were all sitting around. I'd already fed the dog. We'd spent all day. The dog actually had come over to me several times and put his head under my hand as I was standing. And I um, also gave the dog treats after he listened to commands such as come, sit, stay. Okay? So this is... <clears throat> I don't want any advice in the advice column, which is the, otherwise known as the comment section. But anyway, <clears throat> there's the tear. So that's the front of the jeans. Yep. Yeah. And then there's the blood. Because <clears throat> as I was running, this is the back. This is the puncture wound. He gave me two puncture wounds in the back. See? Boing, boing. So that's in the calf. So he, he bit through the jeans. His, his canine incisor took and lacerated the shin point on my leg. And then you can see the bruise marks below the skin line. And then he took and did two puncture marks. There they are. Boom, boom on the back. So as it was happening, I had my right leg back and he's like, and I was just like, he was calling the dog off. And this was after our mistake of not keeping him muzzled and not uh, putting the, um, the leash on him. He had a collar, which he could grab and pull him off, which is what saved me from actually having perhaps bone, bone damage or worse lacerations greater penetrability and arterial damage. Instead, it was just capillary. So I, I, look, I went running while hauled ass to the bathroom and he immediately flushed the wound with water. And I said, can find the dog, first aid kit. <laughs> so he did such a thing and he pulled out his first aid kit. He didn't have any wound wash, but I didn't need it. What he did have was, and I'll show you later, and I'll, I'll show you all the things that I used. He had a silver wound gel. And then, okay, so first I had to wash the wound, then I had to assess it. Now, meanwhile, my adrenaline's pumping. And so I am a professional, and I have been in anatomy physiology class, and I have dissected a fetal pig. So I know how thin the fascia is, and I know all the material underneath. There was absolutely, the, the, the incision got just to my subcutaneous tissue. It was just at the adipose. It was nowhere near muscle or ten, muscles. There was no tendons. There was nowhere near my muscles or my tendons or an artery. So I knew immediately there would be no problem as long as I intended to it, tended to it immediately. And this happened at like 8.58 at night. So it wasn't late, late. <clears throat> and uh, at the same time, we're out in the country. Like we're practically in a cabin that he's refinishing in the country. And I don't want to have anything to do with emergency room services or that experience, especially if I can take care of it myself. And if I couldn't, I would not have made such a judgment. But because I took care of it myself, I can tell you the DIY of wilderness first aid. Now, number one, you gotta have supplies. <laughs> I'll show you all those supplies later. Um, <clears throat> and so basically, stop the bleeding with gauze, assess it. I go, ooh, do you have any butterfly... I didn't ask for any butterfly, um, um, what do you call it? Butterfly band-aids, 
Otherwise, that's what would have been really great if I had immediately done a wound laceration kit. <clears throat> but it was just me, and all I wanted to do was wrap it up, and this is what you do. You cleanse it. You disinfect it if you have those abilities, and I had silver wound gel. You make sure, and then you, you use a non-stick adhesive pad, and you press that on there. And then you wrap it tight enough to keep pressure on it, but not so tight, uh, tight that you like lose sensation in your limb. <laughs> and uh, in other words, you don't want your skin to have Im uh, marks on it. You want it to be wrapped and then you raise it. So I did that, I went out and I go, okay, let's get that dog in here. You contain that dog. That dog must know I am not afraid of it. And so that dog was there and I was like, well, you, you, and now I know, now I know that he's a true guard dog and that we discussed that. But guess what, everybody? I am now an initiate of the dog bite club and <clears throat> we're all going to have a party and get together <laughs> and, and compare wounds. But my laceration is still healing because it wasn't until, okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 days. This is my calendar over here. I'm not going to show you, trust me. But 10 days after <clears throat> I would change the dressing. So this is what I am. I'm out in the field. I don't have butterfly. I don't have knowledge yet of butterfly um, wound laceration repair methods because this has never happened to me before. And so after 10 days and it hadn't sutured yet, <clears throat> I called my brother and I said, Ken, what do I do? And he said, butterfly stitches. And I was, but you can do it yourself. They're called butterfly band-aids. Well, I found out there's two different kinds. There's one that's adhesive and there's one with micro needles. So the one that's in the laceration wound kit that has the micro needles, that's the one you want to look for. And it's scary. So I took a shower and, whoo, 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 and I took a look at the wounds. I, you're not going to close. And then you actually have to like push your skin together. But because I had actually kept it moist for 10 days, <laughs> Um, <clears throat> I warned you this was going to be sensitive content. Uh, it, 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 it was so moist because I did all the things right. You, you change the wound every, you change the wound dressing every day like you're a burn victim. But um, because you're essentially do, it's done the same thing. A burn victim, people have everything burned off down to the subcutaneous, just like I did. And so you're actually it's open and it's like how do you heal how do you heal you have to have the skin the skin has to come together and it was like that and not healing and not healing so I'm like okay so you actually have to get in there and push it together <laughs> and I was all by myself so I'm badass yeah I was like you have to be really tough now people were like that's so irresponsible I go you didn't go and see the rabies shot, blah, 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 tetanus. It's like, stop doing the scare tactics. This is called wilderness first aid DIY. Pretend I was out in the middle of nowhere, like Alaska, and I was hunting bear. And there is nobody out for a full like who, who knows how many days because where I am is akin to where that grizzly man and his girlfriend got chewed by those starving grizzly bears. I mean, you have to get an airplane to come in and land on the water in order for you to actually like get there. That's the kind of first aid, but you have to have all the supplies. That's the thing. So now I know what to actually, I always have on hand. Backpackers, you're just F, you're just like um, SOL. <clears throat> but uh, people who who have the ability to have a vehicle and have storage, you should always carry these first aid items with you. Yeah. So anyway, I was out in the middle of nowhere. I don't have tetanus. I don't have rabies. Um, I put my stitches in on the 8th. And today, at the time of this recording, is the 14th. And so today, I get to look at them a lot. And then tomorrow... I get a, that's a week. So they get to stay in for a week to, to seven to 10 days. 
and then you take them out. And if you need to do it again, you do it again. But it is possible to do it. And it is scary. However, it's empowering to learn wilderness first aid. And I suggest you go to your local REI or whatever, your, your Red Cross, whatever, and like inquire. I'm, a, I'm going to go uh, do the Appalachian Trail. I need to know wilderness first aid. You know, all the normal, get a wound, put pressure on it, keep it above the heart. You know, normal stuff. Raise it if it's your leg. You know? <clears throat> so, I got more than one book on mending. I have two. Because I decided these jeans are going to become a work of art. Now, learning stitches and all of that is going to be part of the things that I'm going to pass on to you. We'll have our own little sewing circle for mending chats. And we'll chat about the things that we are going through, meaning me, myself, and I that I'm sharing with you. And these are all really good life tips. So, repair wound laceration kit. You want to have butterfly band-aids with micro wire in them, not just the adhesive type, but hey... If you have the adhesive, it is non-stick over the stitches. It's only adhesive on either side. Um, if you uh, don't have any of that, of course, you want non-stick pads. You want lots of gauze, antiseptic, uh, wound wash of some kind. If not, you make it with saline by boiling water and adding salt. And that would be your, your uh, wound wash. I'm not a doctor. This is not medical advice. This is life advice from a real person who has had real life experience. You saw those jeans. <clears throat> now this book is the one I grew up with, this one. <clears throat> and it has hand a hand stitching chapter, and that is what we're gonna learn. We're gonna learn about threads and needles, and what kind you use for what, what kind of thickness you need. And this is the fun part, everybody. We're going to learn hand sewing because that is what we're doing. We're doing creative mending. We're doing spiritual kitsungi. I'm having so much fun. Go back and look at my videos from a couple years back. I might insert one or two here. And I was just sad and hurt and going through the grief. And so... I keep everything up, even if it's embarrassing, potentially, in order for other human beings to see the rite of, pros the rite, the rite of passage you go through when you get to your base camp and your own authenticity. So all the hardships that you have in your life are an opportunity for you to grow and know more about who you are. But you have to do the, the fucking work. <laughs> and that's what it is. So cheers to your journey and um, may it be successful as you do your own creative mending. Um, <clears throat> I love this, look. <clears throat> yeah, so my, um, I will be taking, I, I have a Venmo account I will be taking consultations for people who are interested currently in email only. We're going to do email chats to initiate the process of my helping anyone who needs help with where they're at. But I will be charging and we will do an agreed upon uh, payment and agreed upon exposure to your needs for advice or suggestions, or tips, or attention, or whatever. So it's ityogaguide at gmail.com. Inner transformation guide at gmail.com. See you soon at the next one. Peace and love.